Hey there, it's Imran and you're watching Imran Plus. Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Miss Marvel Episode 6, No Normal. This is the epic finale to the amazing series Miss Marvel. So if you haven't seen the finale yet, go ahead and pause this video, watch it on Disney Plus and then come back so we can talk about it with full spoilers. As usual, if you haven't clicked the subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click that subscribe button right now so you can help this channel grow and so you don't miss any upcoming videos. All right, let's get started. So let's start off with the big reveal, the M word. Yes, Kamala Khan is a mutant and the 90s X-Men theme returns once again during the reveal. We first heard it during Doctor Strange's Multiverse of Madness and now here in Miss Marvel and wow, is Marvel really building up the hype as we get closer and closer to an official MCU X-Men project. They are teasing the 90s theme here and there, which I'm a fan of. I do love the 90s animated series and I'm so excited for X-Men 97, which will be showcased next weekend during Comic-Con. It's supposed to be a continuation of that 90s series. But anyway, this is a huge change for the character of Kamala Khan from the comics because in the comics, Kamala is actually an Inhuman, not a mutant. Sorry, Inhuman fans. It looks like there actually won't be any Inhumans in the MCU after all. Or will there? Before we get carried away with Kamala being a mutant, let's first take a closer look at what we've learned so far in this series. Firstly, the Noor dimension, from which Kamala and Kamran come from. I'm still not sure what the Noor dimension is or how it works, but if Kamala is a mutant, how does Kamran have the same powers as her? both of which are channeled from the Noor Dimension. And Kamala's powers were activated by the Bangle, which is similar to how the Inhumans get their powers in the comics via the Terrigen Mist, unlike mutants whose powers start manifesting during puberty. We also have the Bangle itself, which was teased as being a Kree relic from the Blue Hand in Episode 4, and that theory seems to be confirmed with Captain Marvel cameoing in the end of this episode which ties into the Marvels, which will undoubtedly have something to do with the Kree. Lastly, the executive producer of Miss Marvel and the co-creator of the character, Sana Amanat, revealed that they actually had wanted to make Miss Marvel a mutant from the start. And so now with this version in the MCU, they can do that. And while the comic version is an inhuman, the MCU version will be a mutant. This along with Professor Xavier in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness are our introduction to mutants in the MCU, but Kamala herself I don't think will necessarily be an X-Men mutant. I also don't think this means that Inhumans don't exist in the MCU because we also saw Black Bolt in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. My theory is if we do get Inhumans, which I think we still might considering the rumors that the universal Inhumans will show up in the Marvels, they will be a type of mutant but ones that are a direct result of abandoned creed genetic and species experimentation rather than from a latent X gene that is characteristic of the X-Men. In the MCU, we're going to have both X-Men and Inhumans, but they are going to be very different than what we are used to from the comics. I think Kevin Feige is trying to put them both under the banner of mutations slash genetic experimentation, whether through a latent gene like the X-Men or through direct experimentation by the Kree with the Inhumans. We'll see what they decide to do in the Marvels, but as for Kamala, I think she might be a mutant, but I don't expect them to turn her into a member of the X-Men team. And I also don't expect them to make her a member of the Inhumans royal family, regardless of how they end up depicting them in the MCU. I think Kamala will simply be an Avenger that happens to be a mutant. Speaking of Avengers, I do want to discuss our other end credits scene, AKA our Carol Danvers cameo, which was actually directed by Nia DaCosta, the director of the Marvels. So I think that's pretty cool. That means that scene ties directly into the movie. And personally, I really love this end credit scene. I think it's one of Marvel's best end credit scenes. It's a perfect tease that gets you thinking and exciting and theorizing about the next project without pulling focus from the project you just watched. It's a perfect segue that connects Miss Marvel to the Marvels. So basically we see Kamala's bangle light up and act funny and then she's suddenly sucked into a portal replaced by Carol Danvers who is rocking a new suit and a new look. And Carol is confused and alarmed realizing that she's been transported somewhere else. And it's similar to when she first landed in the blockbuster on Earth in Captain Marvel. 
She immediately went outside and started to explore and figured out what planet she was on. So I think she does the same thing in this sequence. And I expect in the Marvels, Carol will run into Kamala's family and we're going to have some sort of funny interaction the same way we had an interaction with Carol and Nick Fury in Captain Marvel. I'm thinking that the switching of places slash teleportation has something to do with the second bangle. Najma mentioned that it was probably taken by the British in episode 4, but what if it was actually taken by the Kree? Because we did see the bangle that was eventually passed down to Kamala came from a blue hand which is likely a Kree hand, so perhaps the other bangle was salvaged by Kree and taken off world. And maybe Carol Danvers has been doing some investigation on the Kree Empire and discovered the second bangle which became activated and caused her to switch places with the owner of the other bangle aka Kamala. I'm guessing that the Marvels will kick off with Carol Danvers back on Earth linking up with Sword aka Monica Rambeau in order to get back to where she came from and where Kamala is probably stuck. So I'm super excited for the Marvels. I think it's going to be marvelous. Back to the Miss Marvel finale, I called it. Kamala's name does in fact come from the Arabic slash Urdu word for perfect or marvelous and Kamala is a marvel. I think that's genius. It's perfect tie-in to both the Marvels as well as Kamala's own identity as Miss Marvel. Such a such a great idea and I think it's been so cool seeing every part of Kamala's superhero identity come together as the series went on and how every part of her superhero costume has meaning and symbolism. I love that her final suit was gifted to her by her mother, which is a callback to when her mother tried to give her the Hulk costume for AvengerCon. And I love that her name Miss Marvel comes from her father. It's so special seeing Kamala's community and family being her support system and backbone, just as I had mentioned and theorized in one of my episode breakdowns. So I'm so happy to see that that turned out to be true. We see that support system manifest when her community shows up for Kamala and physically protects her from the Department of Damage Control, which was a very powerful moment. It makes her a community hero. I've also come to terms with her powers. I still think the change wasn't necessary, but I do like how they look and she basically does use them in the same way that she does in the comics, even saying her signature line in Biggin, which yes, does come out of nowhere, but was still really cool. I think this series captures the heart of Kamala and Iman Vellani is Miss Marvel. She is Kamala Khan and I think that really carries the show. By the way, in the end when the various community members are sharing their TikToks, we actually get a cameo from G. Willow Wilson, who is the original author and creator of the character Kamala Khan. So that was really cool. This series overall felt like a perfect superhero origin story. Harkening back to the Raimi Spider-Man movie, something we don't really get anymore in the age of Disney Marvel dominance. Miss Marvel is a rare gem with an organic way of depicting that truly anyone can be a superhero. And this time, it actually means something. She is an inspiring community-based hero that has a bright, bright future in the MCU. With that being said, this is officially my favorite Disney Plus MCU show hands down. I don't think anything can capture the absolute joy and emotional journey I went on with this show and I will defend it against all of the haters. This is my favorite show. I love the actors, I love the script and the message, I love the direction, and I really love the score and music. All of it so authentic and full of personality. The only thing that I think could be better are of course the villains and the backstory. But I think those were also short changed due to the time constraints, the six episode structure and COVID. As per showrunner Bisha K. Ali who revealed that there were meant to be a lot more parallels between the clandestine and Kamala's own family. In the end, I don't mind it too much because clandestine weren't really the focus of this show. The focus was Kamala's journey into becoming Miss Marvel and I think the show succeeds phenomenally in that regard. This show was also a great introduction to the Department of Damage Control who we will see in She-Hulk and I'm sure will be a much bigger player moving forward. They were the clear villains of this series from the start and I think were a good parallel to the real life surveillance of Muslim communities. Anytime they came and intimidated the people at the mosque was done so well and was really relatable and realistic. I also like Kamran who visually looked very similar to his comic book counterpart by the end of this show. And I actually like him as a villain slash anti-hero. I think he's pretty unstable and has different motivations than Kamala that we didn't really get to explore. I mean, he comes from a different dimension and has known that 
presumably for his whole life. And now he suddenly realizes that because of Kamala, his whole family has died. So I don't think that he has fully redeemed himself or become a hero. I think there's a lot to explore with this character. And I wonder if he'll join the Thunderbolts as an anti-hero turned hero. I think that would be a really cool way to explore his character further because he's clearly in this gray area that would be perfect for Val to recruit to the Thunderbolts. As for Bruno, I wonder if he will run into Shang-Chi or Ant-Man while in California because he is definitely going to be a big character moving forward. Maybe he's going to be involved in the West Coast Avengers, which could be set up with the upcoming Wonder Man series. I definitely think this is not the end of Bruno because his future and his relationship with Kamala is far from over. This is just the beginning. So overall, I am so very excited to see more of Miss Marvel. We know who she is and what defines her, which adds so much depth to her next appearance. Contrast this to America Chavez, who we didn't really get to know and so didn't connect as much with in Doctor Strange 2. So this series was definitely worth it because when Kamala Khan shows up in the Marvels, we will know who she is and it will make her character resonate that much more. This show was also a huge positive representation for Muslims and Pakistanis, which I hope is just the first step of much better representation moving forward. So what did you think of this series? And what did you think of the finale of Miss Marvel? Did you enjoy it or were you not as impressed? And if you identify with Kamala, if you're South Asian or Muslim, how did you feel about this show and how did you feel about the representation? What do you think of Kamala Khan being a mutant and what are your theories for the Marvels? I can't wait to hear your theories. It's been so much fun breaking down and reviewing each of the episodes week by week. I'm going to miss doing this, but I really enjoyed having that conversation with you guys and I look forward to continuing it with the Marvels and hopefully with She-Hulk this fall. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a great time. Lots more videos coming soon, but in the meantime, make sure you like this video and subscribe. Click the bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And don't forget to share this video with your friends and fellow movie enthusiasts. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.